Let's welcome some friends here. We got Agus G. He's the head of partnerships and ops. And we got Oxytocin, who is the head of community. Gentlemen, welcome in. It's great to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting us. I'm super happy to be here. Of course, man. Of course. Welcome. Yeah. So, Thanks for joining uh, the show. Hi, all. How are you doing? All good? Yeah, we're great, man. We're, we're, how are you guys doing? What's going on where you're at? Well, right now, honestly, dying of FOMO. I'm looking at that beautiful beanie. I'm looking at those events and like no amount of diseases, no amount of bugs makes this FOMO go away. That's right. Uh, you're, you're telling me, I mean, I wasn't there, so I'm having the same thing. I've been having it all week. I was telling these guys because they, you know, I'm in the U.S. and, uh, you know, they were all on Istanbul time. I was up at like 2, 3 a.m. checking my phone, just looking if there was any new pictures, trying to see what was going on at Avalanche House. So 100 percent, man, I'm with you. Check, on that. you, you check what, what you check what you were missing, actually. Exactly. Exactly. And see, and yeah, they were always yeah, posting yeah. pictures of food, too. And I'm like, man, I'm, it's just making me hungry. You know what I mean? Man, like the food scene was excellent. Like, you know, Istanbul is one of those places where. You know, you obviously have bad food laying around as well, but like at least where the events were, uh, where people were staying in and around our hotel, everything was awesome. And we had the opportunity to sort of, you know, do a lot of team uh, as well as partner meetings at very good, you know, food places. We should definitely do it uh, next time with you guys as well. I, you, you guys didn't attend, right? Is that correct? We were this close of attending, but then a last minute thing came up and yeah. couldn't make it. And now I'm yeah. feeling... I don't know if they're actually real or if it's just a stereotype. You know, those videos of like Turkish ice cream people that like right. make, <laughs> I feel like I'm watching the ice cream and I was just close of getting it. And then last minute just got pulled away and I'm like, okay, let's try again. Yes. No, it's, <laughs> it's been like that for a week, basically. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That, that's exactly how, that's a Listen, great analogy. You just put, you just put my feelings into words. So that's perfect, man. Yeah. I'm I mean, I, I've had like conversations with, you know, L1 teams and, you know, when they're looking at locations, I kind of want to say Turkey or Turkey and around Turkey is like a good place to be because it's not so far from like the U S the continent of the U S and it's not so far from like the yeah. East Asia area. Uh, so I feel like somewhere in the middle usually works better. And I felt like, you know, Turkey worked quite well uh, for DevCon, ETH Connect this time around, in my opinion. Definitely, guys. Definitely. Well, it's great to have you guys on the show. We usually like to start just like by getting a little bit of um, background from everybody. So if you guys wouldn't mind just giving us like your background and kind of like how you got into crypto, you know what I mean? All right. Um, I guess should I go first? Yeah, go for it, man. Please. Well, my background, to be honest, a bit weird. Um, before coming into crypto, I used to be a scientist, a brain scientist. And in my free time, I just really liked um, looking at all the different things that were happening in the world of decentralized finance. Because I come from Latin America originally, and it's uh, Agua Sista is also from Latin America, and nice. it's quite notorious for pursuing like alternative kind of finances and these kind of things because of the situations that are happening there. Totally. And from there, it's kind of like you discover one thing, then you discover the other. And one thing, first you start with Bitcoin, with this idea of like self-sovereign money. Then you go with like even a layer further with Ethereum and you're like, wow, this money can also be a computer. You can actually make commands onto it. Then you start looking into even other blockchains with scalability. Wow, you can actually get affordable gas <laughs> when you're dealing with this kind of blockchains. And one thing next led to another, and I started just like working with the Paris of DAO in my free time. And it was lovely. The community was great. And next thing you know, I'm doing this for a living, doing this on my full time. And I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, it's, a, it's a space with like such amazing vibes. It's something yeah. that like every single day I'm so grateful to be in. Um, I mean, we're just talking right now about traveling to places like turkey um having this kind of chill podcasts and like i feel so many friends when i tell them like the kind of work that we do like not only are we building the next future of finance right. but we're having fun with it yes i don't know people are like so skeptical about it and it's great no i think i think that's super on point man I, that's one of the things i love about working in this space is like every day i wake up and i'm like my job is fun like we're having fun you know what i mean it's like it's great, man. That's awesome. Agus, what about you? Uh, yeah, I, I want to give this last uh, this last piece of uh, conclusion. Like, 
we are in the best place ever, I think, like, because we are, we are actually working on what we love. Uh, and it's a, it's a great space, uh, to be, uh, like you having this, uh, kind of, uh, spaces where we can talk openly about this and we suddenly we join and you're playing some music and then we discuss going to Istanbul, uh, and then we go into the tech. So I think it's, uh, like, a, a, it, it, sometimes it doesn't feel like real. Um, so a little bit, a little bit of me, I'm, uh, I'm Agus. I joined crypto, I would say around 2017. Mm. Um, first I started it kind of as a hobby, but you know, when sometimes a hobby starts to take a lot of your time, uh, you say, why, why is this still a hobby for me? Yeah. Um, so first it was kind of superficial with some friends and talking in some informal meetings. Uh, I'm from Argentina, so in asados, we barbecues, we talk about uh, that. And finally, yeah. I say, hey, I'm, I'm starting to spend more and more time here, and I'm um, each day I'm more interested in everything around around this. Um, so since then, I've been I've been involved. And one year and a half ago, I went to East Denver and I met all the Paraswap team. And awesome. since then, I've been uh, I've been working here. That's amazing, man. That that that's great, man. Like I kind of feel like every time we talk to folks on this show, you know, we get different perspectives because I feel like crypto is so uh, is an industry that's so conducive to having kind of a unique background, kind of a varied background. You know what I mean? So it's like you could have DJs, you could have neuroscientists, you could have <laughs> finance vets. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It's like we're all just coming together to, like you said, like build this financial future. So really awesome guys. Really, uh, really, I mean, really cool. It, it's, it's, it's sort of, uh, in line with the general ethos of web three, right? Uh, you know, it's open, it's accessible to everyone and people building it come from diverse backgrounds versus if you think about how traditional industries work, traditional finance works, it requires a specific sort of path, you know, by and large, uh, for people to come through. Of course, there are people, you know, who've done history who are, you know, now traders, uh, right. but like it's few and far in between, right? Versus in crypto, you know, every guest that we have on the show talks about a origin story that is unusual, right? The only thing that I can think of that is common is the fact that it always starts as a hobby. Yep. You know, it starts as what the hell is this? Wait, this is interesting. Right. Wait, I'm spending so much time on it and wait, <laughs> I should go full time on it. That's yeah. that's literally the, it's the primary yeah, yeah, commonality yeah. I would say, you know. Definitely. You 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 fell you fall into the into the rabbit hole quickly. That's like, right. Suddenly you are you are there. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly that's exactly but what happened. But yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, like, I feel that comes from the unique advantage of crypto in the entire space, that it's extremely accessible. Yes, that that's right. once you know about it, once you know the information and start putting everything together, yes, communities are going to welcome you with open arms. People are always looking for all kinds of perspectives. It's not this kind of, like, that's a very big advantage of this kind of open source kind of space, that you don't have this click between the developers, the close group of people, and then the outside community, they all kind of blend together. Like somebody could be building something on top of your decks and like, they don't even need to ask for, for permission. They can, you can come one morning and say, Hey, I built a new UI for your decks or something right. like that. Right. That's and right. The lines are so blurred that that's why it becomes so easy to like go from hobbyist to working full time. It's not, I don't know, using another example, um, Imagine you are not into video games. Sure, you can start making your own indie games, but it's not as easy as going from one to the other. You don't have the entire community always feeling the same situation. Right here, yeah, it's just uh, so much more open and so much more fun. Absolutely agreed. In fact, you know, if you think about accessibility, we now have lots of blockchains, all of which are accessible to people. Uh, but they are not easy to access necessarily, right? The same is true for liquidity, and particularly liquidity, very easy to access, meaning anybody can create an AMM that is 
you know, uh, sort of taken from existing code. Code is typically open source, but not everybody's going to know about that AMM existing and they're going to have to do research to get it, or at least it used to be like that. So I would argue that Paraswap, at least the most famous and most well-known uh, thing about Paraswap is that it improves accessibility and it improves user experience, in my opinion. But I obviously don't want to give away sort of what it is. So I'm going to do, do you guys mind just giving us a little bit about what Paraswap is, how it came to be and what it does today? I can I can take this. Um, so thank you thank you for the intro. Uh, you spoiled a bit, but uh, it's perfect. <clears throat> so uh, Paraswap it's a, a Dex aggregator, and as you perfectly described, um, we have several liquidity sources integrated uh, into our aggregation protocol, and um, so it can be understood. We when a user wants to swap one token for the other. You can do what you just described. So go to each liquidity source. And when I say liquidity source, think about liquidity sources like DEXs, AMMs, lending protocols, uh, CLOVs. We have like infinite amount of, uh, of uh, liquidity sources. So think about those. And you can go one by one, checking where you can find the best rate for swapping your token A for your token B. Or you can just go to Paraswap, and we will do that job for you with all our integrated liquidity sources. But on top of that, we can add an additional complexity to this. Is imagine you want to swap a thousand token A for a thousand token B, and there is a better rate that can be get by splitting your trade into different liquidity sources. So this is. Besides, you, the user probably doesn't know all the liquidity sources. Uh, they can't do it. They can check the quotes in, in all the liquidity sources real time, and they cannot replicate this ability that we have to calculate. Also, if we split your trade into different liquidity sources, you will be getting a better rate. So you will be getting in the end more tokens B. Uh, that's the ones that you have got manually if you don't use an aggregator like Paraswap. Um, so that's the that's the real value that we are aggregating, uh, that we are adding in the in the uh, to the crypto users. I mean, I Actually, can. Do you want I to can... add something? Sorry, sorry. Well, I would also add that, like, by having all of this aggregation happening, you also get quite a lot of quality of life coming in. So, for example, instead of having to go, let's say you like um, a couple of DEXs that you're trading in, as opposed to having to go on each one of them, approve the token for that one, then trade through that one, um, you can just go to a single interface and be able to trade your favorite DEXs in one place. And it's not like you're forced to go through all the DEXs that you're being aggregated through. You can go to settings and say, like, I love DEX a lot. I don't like this one as much. I think this one... I have a lot of liquidity pulled in that one, so I would like to support it more. Uh, you just pick and choose, you choose which ones you want. And in the end, this is kind of like what really matters for trying to onboard people to the Web3 space, having the easiest experience possible all in one place. And I'm really proud of that, at least. I mean, uh, like this is a very powerful concept. And I kind of want to put some context and oomph behind it, if you will. In traditional finance, you as a retail user, if you wanted to trade FX, right? Let's say you have dollars, you want to convert it to euros. You don't really have a lot of options, right? Especially, you know, if you're not a finance guy, let's say you're a doctor or, you know, you're a guy who has a job that's not in finance. Pretty much your options, particularly in the US, is limited to using your own bank, right? And your bank is going to give you a price that you will have no visibility of. Like you don't know where that price comes from. And under the covers, in reality, the bank is not necessarily going to go out and look at every liquidity source out there and give you a price, mainly because they don't need to, because you as the user have no visibility, right? Number one, visibility, transparency, severely lacking in uh, traditional finance for retail. If you are an institutional client, let's say, then 
You will have access to services that are way better than retail. But again, in traditional finance, the number of liquidity sources, depending on the currency you want to trade, is very limited, right? And if you have a good bank that serves you, they will have access on your behalf. So, you know, a open, accessible, external tool is not really needed. Uh, but again, you won't have transparency and you're going to have to sort of trust, uh, you know, the institution that serves you. Sort of Paraswap completely changes that, right? Paraswap now takes on the burden of identifying good liquidity sources, connecting to those good liquidity sources, and normalizing those liquidity source differences to the end user and converting it to a single click execution capability. Now imagine if you wanted to trade on a central limit order book, or if you wanted to trade on an AMM, or if you wanted to trade on a lending protocol or a stable swap, the way to trade on those things may be completely different. But if you go to Paraswap, Paraswap does two things. One, it finds you the best price, right? As long as you're not a cultist and you want only one destination, which I can't imagine anybody willing to pay extra money just because they want to play, you know, trade at one place. Paraswap will find you the best price. And then Paraswap will give you a single button, you press, and you'll be done. You'll get the trade and you're going to have the peace of mind that you just got the best trade, right? Best price. The second thing is what, you know, uh, August also mentioned. In the concept of liquidity, people always think direct, right? You think Avax being sold for USDC or USDC being sold for Avax. But in reality, depending on what you're trading, just like in traditional finance, and let me give you a traditional finance uh, example. If you wanted to trade, uh, you know, China's currency directly into euros, in the market, actually, there is no direct trading route, right? What you do is you convert to dollars first, then you convert the dollars to euros. And, you know, this is done again by your service provider. Paraswap can now do this on behalf of the users in a much larger scale because they have a lot more liquidity sources and maybe trading directly doesn't yield the best price. Maybe going to other currencies first provides a better outcome for the user and the user doesn't have to worry about it because Paraswap's logic already takes care of it. So like, you know, realistically from my perspective, knowing how crazy wide the crypto ecosystem is and how fragmented the liquidity is, it is very important for people to know a product like Paraswap and use it on their day-to-day -day sort of operation. If they want to go in, go out. It is very important to sort of look at Paraswap because Paraswap is more than likely going to give you the best price. So that's kind of how we frame it. Do you guys mind uh, talk a little bit about how you decide which liquidity path to go through, right? I have asset A, I want to sell it for asset B, but finding the right liquidity path is a, you know quite a complicated problem. Most people at home won't know this, but do you guys mind you know talking us a little bit about the amazing sophistication that you guys have for doing this? Yeah, I mean, I am not a computer scientist, but even I know that this kind of calculation is one of those notoriously difficult, um, computationally difficult tasks. It's kind of like the idea of having a traveling salesman. What is the best path you can go that covers each one of them? In theory, if you wanted to have the most certain path, it could take you way too long, like seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in the world of DeFi, a second, your rate already changed or something already is not going to be valid anymore. It's not going to be the best trade by the time it's there. So I feel that something that people tend to really neglect when calculating these rates is the ability of picking your fights and knowing where to look, um, being able to do the... F it's a race between speed and accuracy. And it's a bit of a secret formula. Um, obviously, not even I know the ins and outs of these kind of things, but you have to consider, okay, you need to be able to fetch all these prices as quickly as possible. You have to be able to deliver them back to the user, you have to look at the gas intensity as well, because maybe a certain DEX gives you a much better rate, but it's twice as intensive to actually execute the trade. Maybe you have one that isn't as good as the other one, but the amount of gas you're going to be getting is going to be 
like the price for executing that part is going to be a, a lot lower than the other one. So on the user side of things, they see you put in asset A, asset B comes out. OK, fair enough. Um, but behind the scenes, there's so many of these things happening. And in the end, all of this is happening in the span of like a few milliseconds. And it's uh, pretty amazing. Something, yep. Sorry. And it and it is particularly challenging, like you said, because you have different types of liquidity under the covers, right? You have central limit order book liquidity with Dex a lot, for example. Yeah. You have traditional original sort of form AMM liquidity, which is a constant product formula. And then you have the concentrated liquidity uh, mm -hmm. solutions like Uniswap V3 or Trader Joe, where the complexity sort of explodes because there's bins and depending on the size, you know, the gas costs, et cetera, are going to increase. Like, how do you see, uh, you know, different types of liquidity sources evolving over time? Do you see any trends specifically coming in that, you know, Paraswap sees that, you know, you, you would like to add more of, or, uh, you know, do you see any trends that you can share with our audience? We um, we encourage, it's, it's not that we encourage because the process for integrating uh, to Paraswap for becoming a liquidity source in Paraswap, it's uh, open source. Uh, we have um, an open source library, which is called Dexlib, um, mm -hmm. which basically any liquidity source doesn't matter. Uh, we're, we're going back to, to the diversity topic that we were talking in, in the crypto space, but it doesn't matter which liquidity source, what type of liquidity source you are, you can integrate into Paraswap. And the idea of making it open source is that the different teams of the different liquidity sources are the ones that better know their protocols and how they work. So um, this is why we decided to leave this part in the hands of the of their dev teams. Um, so then we can review the integration. So when you talk about trends on liquidity sources, we are not um, encouraging to see uh, more of these type of liquidity sources of, or other type of liquidity sources, we tend to uh, push for better prices and being more efficient uh, regarding gas, what, what is uh, what Osu was just mentioning. So as long as uh, you can have better prices, or if you don't have better pricing, maybe you are more efficient on the gas side or you are more efficient on how you balance your pools or how you manage your order book or you can name it um once you are once you are integrated to paraswap and python i know you worked on the dexalot uh, integration so you know this better than me once you are integrated there uh, then you will start receiving volume automatically because we will start considering that route in in our in our routes so once you're able to provide better pricing, you immediately start to receive trade. So um, if, I, if I had to say about trends, we are seeing this. Uh, the focus on improving prices and improving efficiency. Um, and there are, each day there are more ways of doing it, of doing this, because of the, the, the speed at which the, the ecosystem develops, right? Absolutely. And actually, you know, this brings me to a good point. You know, I'm going to I'm going to shill Dexalot just a little bit where the entire premise of creating a central limit order book on chain was this exact thing that you mentioned. You know, you, you said I may know this better than you. I wouldn't go that far. But quite honestly, the reason why we built Dexalot the way we built it is to improve capital efficiency, meaning the amount of capital needed to provide tight prices to platforms such as Paraswap and the depth, again, for facilitating larger size trades is a lot easier to achieve through a central limit order book solution. All of capital markets that are not digital, meaning that are not uh, crypto, actually only operate on central limit order books. And the reason is you have professional order management where, you know, if a market maker is willing to buy and sell at two specific prices, they don't necessarily need to expand capital to enter orders elsewhere. And as the market moves, they have a mechanism to move their orders easily, 
right? Uh, in comparison to you know a traditional AMM, your liquidity gets distributed across a range. Like in you know Uniswap V1, it gets distributed across the entire range of all possible price sort of uh, price options. In the case of Uniswap V3, it actually gets distributed across a range that you believe is the right range. You may be right, you may be wrong. In the case of a sort of central limit order book, it's being moved continuously, right? So like, I think the holy grail when it comes to providing the best possible liquidity to the end users through platforms such as Paraswap is getting the most capital efficient and getting the most price accurate solution in place, right? AMMs do not automatically update their price. They instead trigger impermanent loss on the underlying liquidity providers versus central limit order books have a lot more price discovery where the prices are going to be updated by the market makers. And, you know, by connecting these sources to Paraswap, you know, Dexalot actually intends to be the sort of top liquidity provider with the tightest prices and most depth. You know, we're, we're obviously new uh, and, you know, uh, we've been talking to a good number of your colleagues uh, trying to optimize a lot of the things we've done, but we appreciate everything you guys have done because your solution basically enables Dexalot to be a lot more accessible because right now Dexalot is on its own application specific blockchain, but we would like to make it available to every user without them having to think about, oh, which web page was it? What button do I click, et cetera? And, you know, Paraswap sort of uh, gives that, gives us that ability. So, you know, uh, yeah. we appreciate you guys. Uh, we appreciate you guys existing, if you will. <laughs> well, that's how you that said I... you were going to chill Dex a lot a little bit there, Firestorm. I mean, I, I, I think I got little... carried away. I, I noticed I got carried away, so I'm shutting, shutting up. Uh, that's not enough chilling. We <laughs> never stop Dex a chilling here. Hey! Hey! Love, love that keychain. I was going to say... <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I feel that's a very neglected aspect when talking about aggregators. Um, obviously, we always try to think about users when having these kind of conversations. So you talk about aggregators and you talk about what the user gets. You get the best price, you get a single interface, you get all of these neat perks. But in my opinion, a very ignored aspect when you're looking at aggregations and integrations is that the best one in the market gets the rate and it's something that it sounds obvious but it's usually neglected a lot like think about more traditional world gardens kind of systems um, many people tend to go thinking about brick and mortar stores they go to a store because they have cool branding because they know more about it they ignore another one because i don't know i don't trust this um, storefront i don't really believe that they are going to be offering the best rates and we as aggregators take away all of this um i don't know how to call it uh, makeup that people have to do with this kind of branding all of these kind of problems and like the best one wins period and it's something that it's been a huge problem for accessibility when talking about trading in web3 imagine if for example every time you had to make a debit card credit card transaction you had to think about like okay which one would i rather be trading with um, PayPal, Master, MasterCard, Visa, which one is going to be giving right. me the most secure infrastructure procedure? No, everything is just abstracted away. You find the input, you get the output, and then in the back end, everything is kind of being solved. And Paraswap like, really empowers this. You don't have to go around reading what is a club, what is an AMM, what is the difference between Uniswap V2, V3, um, V4, whatever. This is something that it's been kind of implicitly told until now that like if you're trading on a dex you have to know like how much you're going to be screwed over with trade size um judging from different dexes what are the advantages and disadvantages of like trading in specific mediums um which ones actually have liquidity because that's another thing that front ends tend to be sneaky about some of them are very proud about the liquidity liquidity depth liquidity efficiency others hide it behind like lots of walls um, Parasub just takes all of that away, says, okay, you got the best price. It doesn't matter if you're a brand new solution system. It doesn't matter if you're a club. It doesn't matter if you're an AMM. If you're integrated, if you're giving a good rate, we're going to be passing the volume through and you'll be getting the volume that you deserve with your solution. And yeah, it's something that I feel it's really, really neglected when thinking about these kind of things. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, volume is definitely a step function, right? If you are the best price, if you have the best depth, you know, that's where the market sort of goes towards. And, you know, a lot of things go into that. The underlying L1 infrastructure, how fast the transactions can mm -hmm. settle, how expensive the transactions are, how good the liquidity is in the case of AMMs, how big your TVL is in the case of clubs, how accurate your market makers are. That's all that has to come together. And then you sort of integrate all of this with Paraswap and Paraswap is sort of the POS for the end users, right? Like you said, if you go to a store, they have the POS system, which will aggregate Amex, Visa, MasterCard, you know, Diners Club, Discover, whatever else under the covers. You don't have to care. You swipe and you're done. You don't even know what happens under the covers. I feel like Paraswap is the closest thing uh, to a POS system that users in crypto who want to go in and out can get to. And, and like I said, I think it's very critical. Um, Definitely. Let me, let me, let me change gears just a little, obviously you guys are most well known, uh, you know, for the aggregation capability, your sophistication with respect to figuring out liquidity paths. What else do you guys have? And you know, what else are you guys building? Um, so, um, in, in our core, of course, there is the, the, the aggregation engine, um, but we have, we have different ways of uh, trading or swapping tokens inside Paraswap. So you can uh, swap on the market rate. Uh, you can also uh, use limit orders. Um, so you can uh, create trading strategies directly in Paraswap. Uh, you can do OTC trades. Uh, basically, you input the token, the price that you want to uh, sell or buy, and you assign this uh, OTC to a particular address, and only that particular address will be able to uh, fill uh, that order you are creating. So there are a bunch of ways of uh, trading uh, in Paraswap, which um, kind of uh, market orders rely on the aggregation protocol, but limit orders or OTC uh, orders rely on the on on our RFQ protocol, which works. Uh, uh, in a different way, but it's built for swapping, for doing trades, right? Um, and then we have everything related to uh, our token, um, to staking and participating in the protocol's uh, revenue. So at the beginning of this year, we introduced something which we call BSP 2.0, uh, which is our new rebranded tokenomics that introduces, I would summarize it into Two, two main two main points uh, obviously you can you can also add. Um, so the first point is we introduced um, uh, the revenue distribution model so basically the stakers of PSP token are now able to participate uh, in the distribution of the 80 percent of the protocol rewards and these rewards are distributed in e so uh, it's kind of a real deal uh, so you are not getting the same token that you're staking gen which generates token inflation we uh, we have learned a lot about inflation the last year so uh we have also adapted this um so we distribute ETH for stakers and the second point that we introduced it, it's something that we call social escrow uh what is social escrow is um instead of uh, staking the token and just staking and leave it the stakes there you can boost the share you get of the protocol rewards by performing certain actions. So it's not just about the amount you stake. So uh, we, we love whales, but we don't want this to be just a whale game. Um, so it's not just about the amount you stake, but also how much you use the protocol. So if you stake and then you go and trade through Paraswap, whether it is market or the limit, or the OTC, uh, but you also fill orders, uh, you also use our referral program, uh, and you keep your stake, you will get a bigger boost, uh, and this bigger boost will directly translate in the share of the rewards you get uh, epoch by epoch, which we call, which, our epochs are 28, 28 days long, so it's a month by month, we can call it month by month. Um, and we have seen like the, our TVL only grow since then, um, so basically, to, to answer your question, we have everything related to our tokenomics and our social escrow model, which uh, was 
very, very good received by the community. And then we have our core, which is our aviation business. Very cool, very cool. Uh, what is coming next? Is there any alpha that you guys can share with us? We'd love to drop some alpha on this yeah. show. Is there anything, you know, that you'd the like chat to loves the tease? alpha guys? You know, <laughs> announcements of announcements is never a, you know, unheard of thing on the show. But, you know, yeah. I kind of want to ask you that before I, we let you go. So the boring thing about Paraswap is that we do everything in the open. But that also makes it interesting because it means that if you know where to look, you know the alpha way ahead of time. Um, I'd say to everyone, and I feel not a lot of people know about this whenever they talk about anything DeFi related, look in the forums. I know that it looks difficult. I know that people are talking about a lot of boring things. They're talking about token budgets and like service providers. But like, I swear to God, like most of the biggest campaigns that you've seen in the space were usually telegraphed like two, three months ahead of time just from people requesting the DAO for the funding. Um, we, and that's why I feel that like, if you want to be seeing what's going to be coming next, just dropping in there or even dropping in the Discord and like asking what's been cooking is going to have people just excitedly jumping at you and like talking about all the things that are going to be happening. And yeah, just to give a couple of examples, if you were to go in the forums right now, for example, you would see that the DAO has been working on a new um, partnership with Aura for boosting the protocol and liquidity and boosting it, this kind of like liquidity system. And if you go to Aura right now, the pool has been opened literally just a couple of days ago. And it looks like there's nothing cooking up. But if you go to the forums, then you see like exactly how much is going to be given. You see how long the campaign is going to be working for. You see that there's going to be like cool distribution systems happening. It's uh, it's insane. It's again this idea of like um, just having the gifts hidden, just like behind the shed. And if you just bother looking in the shed, asymmetric, as I looking call it. looking past like the boring tools, looking past the loan mower, you see like yeah. these big boxes, and you're like, oh, something nice is coming this Christmas. I wonder where <laughs> it, it is. It's, right. it's 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 very funny actually. This made me think of something. We have. You know, we have a very sort of varied community as well, right? You're going to have some folks who will join the Telegram and he'll be, you know, they'll be asking about when this, when that, right? right. And that's it. That's the extent of the effort they're going to do. They're just going to go in the Telegram. They're going to scream for a few minutes and then they're going to hope that something gets done or price goes up or whatever. Then the something. price ask when those are the uh, two yeah and then, then you have the other kind of guy who's gonna like pick up the clues from right. this show or like the spaces then they're gonna go to paraswap then they're gonna look at the github of paraswap then yep. they're gonna like incessantly refresh the github to see when certain code changes are coming in when the prs are being merged and they're gonna go look at the forum etc always be like the second group guys yeah, that's where true alpha is. And, you know, if you know how to get this information, as Oxy said, uh, you know, one to two months lead time. Like in, so one to two in the open. We're yeah, not yeah, working close to the you, and, you, and you guys have an also, amazing community don't... too. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Agus. Go ahead. No, no. I was going to say that if you don't know how to get this information, just ask. Because uh, going back to what we discussed at the beginning, uh, the community, and, and I'm not talking only about the Paraswap community, it's so open that, uh, like, I, I've never seen uh, a dumb question uh, that the community makes you feel like you're asking something that it's dumb. Because as we are such a diverse uh, ecosystem, right. uh, there are no dumb questions, basically. That's just it, man. If, Let's see what Beast Lorian is talking about. Only a nerd would refresh the GitHub repository looking for pull request reviews. But well, here's the trick. Here are a few. Yes, a but nerd, even if saying. you're a nerd, like if you're not a nerd, if you find a nerd, nerds are so excited to tell you about what they found refreshing the GitHub page. Oh, and that is the real alpha that like <laughs> everyone here is waiting for anyone to ask, hey, what did you find today? Or anything cool around here? It's like if you can have... Uh, Twitch space with a DJ, a scientist, and a finance guy, 
all in one space. You, all of these people are just waiting to just like flood you with this kind of information. There's no other space where you literally need to wait. Yeah. And if you ask the right people, they're going to be telling you everything. They're going to be spilling the beans. I'm yeah, very happy. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I'm very happy. For example, like in our community, we recently had, for for example, the paratroopers. They're people that are just like part of the DAO community. Yeah. And they just love helping out the community, giving a hand for these kind of things. And it's this kind of shared passion about building something together out in the open that if you ask something further than just when, if you ask somebody like, hey, I came to in the club with Exelot and I heard something about social escrow. I don't know. I was washing my dishes. I was walking the dog. I couldn't really hear what it was about. What is it? Suddenly you have like multiple people are typing in the Discord. So I know we made it sound like a treasure hunt, but it's kind of a treasure hunt where you have like a guy standing there, like, you know, this kind of a supervisors for the treasure hunt for the Easter eggs, like where if you're like, okay, I cannot, find, yeah. I cannot find the third clue. Can you tell me where it is? They're going to be like, yeah, sure. Exactly. That's exactly it. Guys, he just, he just put it out there. And, you know, I, I think it's safe to say Dexalot follows the exact same strategy. If you watch this show every week, you already know what's going on. I mean, if you follow our guy Beast Lorian on Twitter, you know what's going on. You know what I mean? So that's what I love about this community. And that's just, yeah, that's just ISIS it, man. That's great. You guys have such a great community too. So I got to shout out the Paraswap community, um, Oxy, for you guys have fostered an awesome community, man. So shout out to you for making all that happen, dude. That's, that's really, really cool. Um, we are getting a little low on time. So uh, before I let you guys go, one thing that we did talk about a little bit of DJing. I got to get a song request from each of you because I'm going to finish the show with a little bit of music. So you don't have to think of it right now, but if you can, if you can, I'll take it. But if you can't, just send it to our producer in the chat. Send a song request. I'll get it. I'll mix them in. We'll, we'll make it happen. If you got them right now, though, I'll take them. Oof, it's difficult because I feel that like we've built such good vibes. And then if I give you a crap suggestion, I'm going to be kicked out of the show instantly. No, so. <laughs> man, you're, you'll be welcome back. But here's the thing. If you don't, I mean, I, I was a, I was a 20 year DJ. So if you want me to do the, to the selections, I'm happy to uh, do that for you, but just send our, send our, uh, send our producer, your song requests. We'll make it happen. Anything goes. Yeah. Dude, beast, the song that beast requested when he was on, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a wild one, man. He was yeah, banger time. There we go. But you guys let me know in the chat. We got a we got a nice TG uh, group going here, so we'll we'll talk there. But it was so awesome having you guys on the show. Paraswap, Agus, Oxytocin, man. Thank you guys for being here. We got to have you back uh, to talk more because I feel like this was another one that just flew by. It feels like we've been talking Definitely. for about 10 minutes and it's yes. been an hour. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at like the counter. Crazy. I'm like, that thing's broken, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Well, guys, thanks so much for being here. You guys have a great week, and uh, we hope to talk again real soon, man. This is awesome. Thank you. Like, Thank you guys. for having us. Yes, we enjoyed it a lot. Thanks. Yeah, we'll awesome, see you guys yeah. next time. Take care.